When subtracting rational expressions, you need to make sure that you have a common denominator. I have three examples here so we can get some practice. So let's look at the first one. I have 5x over 3 minus 1 over 6. So I want to find the lowest common denominator. So I'm looking at the 3 and the 6, trying to find the smallest thing that both go into nicely. That would be 6. So then I'm going to build up each of my fractions. Remember, rational expression, just a fancy math way to say fraction. So build up both of my fractions so that they have the common denominator of 6. So when I look at the first fraction, it has a 3 in the bottom. I need to get to 6. I can do it with multiplication. So I do bottom by 2 which means I have to multiply the top by 2, so then really only multiplying by 1. 2 over 2 is 1. So that expression is going to change into be 10x over 6 minus 1 over 6. Now I have two expressions with a common denominator. So that common denominator is going to be the denominator of my answer, unless it might reduce in a bit. And then my numerator is just the numerator of the first fraction minus the numerator of the second fraction. Now remember, 10x and 1 can't combine because the 10x has an x in it and the 1 doesn't have an x in it, so that's all I can do there. The 10 and the 6 can't reduce because even though they share a common factor of 2, 2 is not actually a factor of the numerator. It doesn't go into the negative 1 over here. This is as tidy as it can get. That's the final answer. Okay, let's look at the second example. Here I have x over x plus 5 times x minus 1 minus 2x plus 1 over x plus 5 minus x minus 1. Hey, I've already got the same denominator. That's great. So that's going to be the denominator of my answer, again, unless it might reduce at the end. We'll check that. The reason why I put this example in is that the numerator of the second fraction is a binomial. It has two places, two um, terms and I'm subtracting it. So we need to be careful that we subtract off both pieces of that. So when I write the numerator here in my answer, I'm going to do it in two steps. We'll go ahead and do the first numerator, x, minus, this is a binomial. Good rule of thumb when you're plugging in binomials to anything is to wrap it in parentheses until you know if you need them or not. So we're going to do minus that binomial. So now I have to distribute that negative sign through that set of parentheses, through that second numerator. So my denominator, I still have that LCD. The top's going to be x minus 2x. Don't forget, it goes both places, so it goes here and it goes there. Minus 1. Still have that same denominator. And let's squeeze our answer right in here down below. x minus 2x, those can combine. They both have x's. So x minus 2x is negative x. And then just minus 1 tagging on. Then in the bottom, I have x plus 5 times x minus 1. Okay, you're not going to love this. That's the final answer. That negative x minus 1 and that x minus 1, I know it feels like they're going to reduce. They really don't. You can check it out. Try to factor that negative 1 out of the numerator there, and you'll see that it shows up to be x plus 1. It's not the same as x minus 1. It's not even off by a negative sign. Trust me on this. Or if you don't trust me, go ahead and plug in numbers, and you'll see that you don't get the same thing. Okay, third example. <gasps> this one has everything. So now we need to, first of all, figure out what the lowest common denominator is. And to do that, we need to factor the two denominators that we're given. So let's look at x squared minus x minus 6. Co leading coefficient's 1, so I'm only looking at 6. Factors of 6 that subtract to give 1 x minus 3 times x plus 2. When I look at the second denominator, it's a difference of squares, so x plus 3 times x minus 3. So now I need to build up that LCD. So I take all of one of the denominators. I know it has to be at least that much so that my first fraction has it. Looking at the second one then, my second denominator needs an x plus 3. I don't have that. I better tack that on. It also needs an x minus 3. I do have that. So that one I don't need to put on there again. So here's my LCD. Let me grab a new color. Because now when I look at that first fraction, I need to multiply top and bottom by the factor that it's missing from the LCD. So it's the x plus 3. So top and bottom get multiplied 
by x plus 3. Second fraction, the factor it's missing is x plus 2. So top and bottom by x plus 2. Okay. Now we're going to see if we can fit this on this page. So my LCD goes down here, x minus 3, x plus 2, x plus 3. And then in the top, I have 7 times, okay, I'm out of room, so you guys are going to bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So 7x plus 21. Okay, stay with me. Now it's negative 2 distributing, so minus 2x, minus 4. Okay, last step. I'm not there yet because that numerator tidies. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll grab another color so you can see it. Final answer. Here we go. It better not reduce because I don't have room for that. Let's see. I have 7x minus 2x, so that's 5x. And I have 21 minus 4. Only add and subtract like terms. What, plus 17? Okay, that's not going to factor, so I don't have to worry. Ta-da!